This is a giant reinforced concrete fidget spinner. And at this point, I'm pretty scared of it. Fidget spinners, that's like so four weeks ago, I know. But my daughter really wanted one and I said, yeah, okay, you can have one. But how about I build it? And instead of it being for fidgeting, it'll be for crushing and destroying. She said, I don't know what she said. I was already in the shed. So today I'm gonna to show you how to build a giant reinforced concrete fidget spinner. Just as a quick disclaimer though, don't actually build this, it's dangerous. Now to kick this build project off, we need the heart of every fidget spinner, which is a wheel bearing. This one's a skate bearing, nah. But this is a bigger, more industrial bearing. Nah, that's not a bearing. This is a good fidget spinner bearing. So first we have to make a mold to pour our concrete into. I'm gonna use 18 millimeter MDF boards. These are actually pretty heavy. Hopefully this plus the concrete won't be too heavy for the table. So best test that. All good. I'm going with the most traditional fidget spinner shape and I'm gonna scale up the dimensions based on this printout. Now working out the centers for each of the three arms was pretty important just to keep the whole thing balanced because if the whole thing isn't balanced, it's gonna spin really badly when it's made of concrete. With each of the centers meticulously set, it's time to draw circles and circles and, and more circles. I then found that this rubbish bin lid was perfect for making the curves of the rest of the arms and keeping them a nice consistent shape. I'm pretty happy with this shape. Let's cut this thing out. Now I'm using a drill because I got confused about what a saw was. No, first you have to drill a hole so then you can insert the blade of the jigsaw. Then we grab the jigsaw and we start cutting, trying to be as accurate as possible. The first cut is complete, double thumbs up. Now it's time to smooth out some of those edges. In this instance, I'm using a metal file because I don't own a wood file. I find them to be a bit arrogant. Now we do the outer cut around our mold, leaving a bit of meat around the edges to allow for a bit of strength when we pour our concrete. Ah, there's nothing like the smell of carcinogenic particle board dust in the morning. I want the concrete to be as thick, if not a little bit thicker than the bearing. So I need to use two boards back to back. I'm using the first cutout as a template for the next one. And then I've cut this out in the same fashion. And there is my first mistake. Although I like to think I'm a jigsaw accuracy ninja, there's no way these two are gonna line up and they haven't. All of these dodgy lumps and bumps are gonna snag on the concrete when I try and push it out of the mold. In hindsight, I should have cut out the outer shape of the first mold, then laid it on top and cut through both layers at the same time. Either way, I'm lining them up and I'm gonna glue them together with some PVA glue and spreading it out as evenly as I can so no concrete leaks between the two boards. Bang, drop them together like a cool woodworking dude and you've got a little bit of time to line them up. Now, while I'm waiting for the glue to dry, it's time to go to work on smoothing out the edges of my mold. I'm using a rotary burr. I love these things, but you know what? It sucks. This job is taking too long. So I'm gonna go the angle grinder with the flap wheel because one must always grind some stuff. And then there's lots of sanding. I've moved through three grades of sandpaper to try and get the edge as smooth as possible so it releases from the mold. Oh yeah, I've never molded concrete before by the way. Just thought I should disclose that. To make sure the bearing is nice and centered, I'm gonna use the piece I cut out earlier as a jig, which drops nicely into place. At about this point, it's a good time to play with a fire. Heh <laughs> burning wood. Playing with fire is not recommended. Now while you were distracted with that fire, I cut a hole for the bearing in the middle of the jig. With the addition of a couple of screws, I can lift the wood away and leave the bearing in the middle undisturbed. To reinforce the concrete, I'm gonna use steel mesh and steel rod throughout. Not only will it make the concrete a lot stronger, it will allow me to make some retainers to keep the bearing in place. Once the bearing's in place, I can start to cut out my mesh to provide the reinforcement. I've tried to keep this as symmetrical as possible to keep everything nice and balanced. Then there's just a little bit of welding to keep everything in place. And I've bent some of the ends of the mesh so it doesn't sit flat on the table, but instead sits in the middle of the slab, providing maximum strength. In doing a bit of research, it looks like there's a lot of things you can use as a mold release agent for concrete. So I thought I'll just have a crack at using some raw linseed oil. This to try and stop the edge of the MDF from soaking all of the water out of the concrete and expanding the wood out of shape. The strength of concrete is measured in MPA. Standard residential stuff is about 20 MPA. I've gone for high strength concrete, which is 40. My skills in using concrete to attain that strength may be another story though. Using a household bucket, I've added some water until I've got the consistency right, and then it's pouring time. To move the aggregate down around the mesh and to smooth the concrete out while getting the bubbles out, I found the best way is to start punching the table. 
You can see the air bubbles rise to the surface and then the concrete smooth out over the mold. I've tried to pour and smooth out the concrete as evenly as I can to try and get a nice even weight distribution across the entire spinner. It's a common misconception that concrete dries out and this is how it goes hard. It's actually a chemical reaction with the water. So the longer it stays wet, the harder the concrete becomes. Which is why I'm spraying this with water and wrapping it with plastic. If kept moist, it should get to full strength within about a month. But I want to give it seven days because I want to play with my concrete fidget spinner. Seven days later and we are ready to pop this out of the mold. Hopefully. The surface turned out a little bit powdery because I worked it a bit too long after it was ready to be left alone to cure. It's separated from the plastic nicely and the bottom has turned out great. You can even see the impression of the plastic in the concrete. Now I'm just going to work my way around the edge applying pressure to release it from the mold. And it's free. We have ourselves one fidget spinner shaped slab. Even though I attempted to seal the edge of the MDF, the wood has soaked moisture out of the concrete during the curing process, making the edge really powdery. But on the upsides of this, I should be able to dust the excess sand away, leaving a nice exposed aggregate edge, which should look pretty aggressive. Now fidget spinners are one of the few applications you'll find that uses just a single bearing. Most wheels from skateboards to cars will have two bearings, one on each side to give it strength. A single bearing in this application is definitely not going to cut it. So what I've done is I've located my bolt holes buried in the concrete and made up a cage to house a second bearing. This thing is pretty damn heavy, but I've managed to slide it onto a shaft with the assistance of a car jack and strapped it between two trestles. The exposed aggregate edges are looking pretty nice. The bearings are holding nicely within the concrete and I do believe we are ready for some spinning. The giant reinforced concrete fidget spinner seems to turn pretty good. There is a bit of a balance issue, so I've put in some bolts and some weights on the lighter arms just to even everything out. Now this thing has a lot of mass behind it. Even spinning it fast by hand, I reckon if this thing came down on my leg, it's going to break a bone. One of the benefits of having the bearing cage mounted on the side is I've just realised I'll be able to tie a rope around this and use it to spool the fidget spinner up faster than what I would have been able to do by hand. I've used a long length of rope and rigged up some pulleys because I don't want to be on the same rotational plane as this. Because I just keep having visions of what happens when something big and spinning is pushed beyond its limits and catastrophically fails. Like this wind turbine in Denmark that just got sick of being a wind turbine. Now the final test, I've wound a rope around it and we can see how fast it goes. Although it's not perfectly balanced, at the moment it spins for about 8 minutes before it comes to a complete rest. Now, just the issue of trying to stop this thing. Maybe I'll throw a sheet at it. Now this wasn't built for just spinning, it was built to destroy. So stay tuned for my next video where I feed it various items to test its destructive capabilities. Also, if you missed it, check out my Cooler Drone video, which is a previous video. I'm Craig Turner, YouTube channel is Turner81. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.